Tifu, the long-standing king in the Fortnite competitive world, was disgraced at the World Cup. He found himself on the defensive against a player so skilled that he makes the best of the best, even Tifu himself, look like a bot. As Tifu struggles to make it into the next zone, he's targeted and gets hit with a massive 120 damage headshot. He tries boxing up, but to no avail. His wall is instantly replaced, edited, and he gets taken down by a shotgun to the face. This was no lucky accident. This was a clear outplay. Want to make some epic plays yourself? Check out InstaPro on ProGuys.com. We have the best coaches in the game ready to give you the best tips and tricks for a very minimal amount of moolah. So who could do this? Who can make killing Tifu look so effortless even amidst all the chaos during Endgame? You'd probably think maybe someone like Mongrel, Booga, or Mr. Savage M. Well, no. He's actually a 13-year-old kid from Argentina. Yeah, you heard that right. A 13-year-old. And he's going to be taking over the world of Fortnite soon. He's quickly gone from just another Fortnite player to an international esports icon, and he's the one who just walked all over Tifu. Tiago Lap, aka King, placed fifth in the World Cup solos by racking up 30 points. His performance came as a shock to viewers. Nobody was expecting to see the Argentinian flag pop up in the rankings. Argentina is not the easiest place for a Fortnite player to come from. In fact, there's only one server in all of South America, and it's in Brazil. So he's had to play this entire time on high ping too, just another obstacle. He emerged in the South American esports scene after qualifying for both the Solos and Duos World Cup. Quickly, he was gaining traction around the world. His ability to play so high, even through all the challenges he faced, is truly remarkable and made him gain lots of admiration from fans. People were excited to see if he could still perform even when playing against better tier players. And boy, did he. We've seen South American talent before, don't get me wrong. Most notably, SK Gaming's CSGO team, which featured five Brazilian players. They went on to win nearly $2 million in prize money while they were together. That was the first time we saw attention getting drawn to South America, and this looks like the second. The rest of the world needs to watch out because they're coming in hot. The average wage in Argentina is around $5,000 per year, as opposed to the US's average at around $60,000. So you can imagine how much this money will do for them in their community. Argentina is a developing nation. $900,000 goes very, very far. As esports gains popularity and the players gain notoriety, young players may be able to see gaming as a possible profession there, like everywhere else. We'll definitely start to see King streaming now. He's only had one video on Twitch, and he has 47,000 followers at the moment. Obviously, this is a life-changing amount of money anywhere, and it was so great to see his reaction after winning. You can see in this clip here, he's hugging his father, who's saying Todo Tuyo, which means all yours. This won the hearts of Fortnite fans everywhere. I feel like, <sighs> I might cry. <sighs> anyway, back to the Fortnite. Something that made him play so well was his consistency as a player. To be that good, you need to constantly be playing at the top of your game, and throughout each game he put up a really good fight. He kept playing hard, even when he had a few bad games. Keep in mind, it's not easy to stay composed after you die off spawn, for me at least. His first game was his best when he got 7 kills and placed 21st, which gave him 10 points. In the next two, he didn't do too well, scoring just 0, 2, and 1. But then, in his last game, he clutched up and pulled away with 9 points, soaring him to 5th place on the leaderboard. If it wasn't for this last game, he wouldn't have made $750,000. What a clutch! What really set him apart from other players was his unique way of playing. If you watch any of his games, you'll notice how aggressive he is. He's not afraid to go for risky edits or plays that put him in a bad position. He just does it. This is a telltale sign of a good player. When you can play the same against bots in public matches, or the best 75 players in the world, it shows how good you are. Apparently the reason for his playstyle is that he's used to pub stomping. Let's face it, the best players in the world aren't in South America, so he was usually destroying people in pubs. That's all he ever knew. His playstyle couldn't just change overnight, instead he just went in and played exactly like he did back in Argentina. And it worked! Viewers loved watching him play. His fast play style is so much better to watch than the slow, drawn-out games that we see from most other players. It's really similar to the competitive meta before it became so turtle-heavy, where people ran around more and end games weren't quite as packed. This made him an instant fan favorite and got him featured on the live stream for minutes at a time. For example, let's take a look at his play against Tifu. He'll make it a move on the outside. He is in the shadow form still, and you can keep this by jumping oh, against the wall. That was not a good shadow bomb, I can tell you right now. Gotta be 
disappointed there. Big hit from above, down to 55 HP. Tifu, the edit from the outside, and he is eliminated by King. And look who it is again, King, the player with seven eliminations in game number one, keeps the aggression going in game two. The heavy sniper that immediately destroys that wall and is rewarded with incredible loot, almost max builds as well. Notice his positioning in zone. Not only are there people surrounding King from behind and in front, but the zone's moving in. He'll be getting pushed by the people near the zone soon, and will also be getting focused by those who are already inside. It's a sticky situation. Any normal player in this scenario would choose to run into zone and stay under the radar, but King decides to go for the kill. He noticed that Tifu was vulnerable because he was rotating, and Tifu was about to de shadow bomb, so he jumped on the opportunity to be hyper aggressive and hit him with a quick shot to the head. After this, he still chooses to stay in the open and ignores Zone to pressure Tifu. He goes for a quick heavy snipe for the wall replace, edits, and gets the kill. This is also a good example of King's ability to weigh the pros and cons of a decision quickly. That's part of the reason why he's so lethal. Catching people off guard, such as when they're rotating, makes for much easier kills, and is where he accumulates most of his eliminations. I mean, even as Tifu, how do you defend against that? This kind of instinctual play is exciting to watch, and you can tell he's a natural. You can see another example of this right here, where he decides to expose himself to all the other players to go for the shot. It's on the farm side of this, so it's also not a fun spot by any means. Quick note, King currently has the highest damage in the match, 574, meaning, like I said, that aggressive gameplay. Still in it, still trying to win, still trying to get the beat on players, and a quick beam on Aspect up the ramp, caught off guard by an edit play, a shot Dude. through the wall, King. gets the follow through with the edit, Nate goes down, he is playing out of his mind right now. King reminds me of like Vinny and Zextro back in the earlier King knows when people are safe to shoot and how to minimize his chance of getting shot by going for specific edits. In this scenario, the player is being targeted by multiple other players, so King decides to catch him off guard with a window edit. Simple. The next one is slightly more risky. The player in front of him is preoccupied with other players, so he knows that he'll be able to replace the wall. King goes for it and gets a really easy kill. Once again, those are the kind of plays that you should be going for. Aggressive, yet thought out. Maybe check his other sides. Meanwhile, King, that wiki in a 1v1. King on the defensive. At this point, he might have the high Oh my gosh! Sneaks the shotgun shot in right before the ramp can go down. Oh, oh, no. Okay. Oh, okay. no. And you see King a little bit of a smirk right now. Now, here's something minor that you may not have noticed. If you look at any of his gameplay, you need to observe his wall edits. They might look pretty standard, but he actually intentionally does certain wall edits depending on where the enemy is and how they're peeking him. You will never see King going for an edit that immediately exposes his head. When you're doing an edit on someone, they always have the advantage because they don't have to wait for their shotgun to pull out again. By going for a safer edit, they won't be able to go for that quick headshot. One edit that we saw a lot of in the World Cup was the top three squares selected edit. This one gives you time to pull back out your shotgun, then go for the jump shot onto the enemy. This tip might seem minor, but it really is a lifesaver. The one time he didn't go for this edit, he ended up getting killed. Absolutely! The number one performance so far in game one, 120 in total HP! Can he find us a limb? No! As the crowd erupts. If you're looking to take something away from this video and want to play more like King, here it is. Don't be afraid to play aggressive. Go for risky plays and wall edits. People aren't usually expecting that much aggression. Don't go running around with no cover all the time, but know when to be aggressive and go as hard as you can when it's time. Quickly weigh out the pros and cons of doing something. This should be subconscious, but try to think of why you're doing something before doing it. If you're struggling with your game IQ, check out our video on how to increase your game IQ. Stay composed. It's okay if you lose a game or two. All you need is a few good games and you'll usually score high. Think about this. One game where you get four kills and place 13th will give you nine points. Do that a few times and you'll be scoring really high. Don't go for wall edits when your head is completely exposed. Go for triangle or half wall edits instead. Never stop moving. Everything you're doing in a game should have a purpose. Pick up a heavy sniper over anything else. They're so clutch for quick wall replaces, so they're pretty much uncounterable. The best thing about King's age is that he has so much time to develop his skill as a player. For someone his age, his composure and dexterity is quite surprising. He can only continue to improve by playing more and more. Needless to say, we'll be seeing him a lot for years to come. Personally, I can't wait to see what this guy's going to do in the future. Long live King Tiago! What do you think of Fortnite Cup? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. If you like this, make sure that you share it with your friends, like and subscribe to our channel because we have more videos just like this coming out every single day. 
Also, you can follow me on social media at at Daniel Ammerman on Instagram and Twitter. And good luck with your Fortnite grind. We'll see you guys out there.